Hello, that's Mr. M down there. So I've been rushing around, really busy. I've had such a busy day today. Um, I don't know how many will find this live, but I'm, nevertheless, I'm gonna do it. It's what I'm calling a paint party. Paint parties with Jonathan are usually in the kitchen. Uh, like some of you painters at home, I've got all of the things out that I want to uh, showcase what I'm doing today. Um, as you can see, table's covered. So I am covering off what I did in California because unfortunately, God, I've even got bad hair. Unfortunately, that's better. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to film my breakout sessions with um, Annie Sloan and the IOD girls. Me and Annie shared a breakout session and we used the Barnwood uh, stamp and oh this is going to be a thing I've got notifications coming up and I thought I'd switch them off I don't know whether it's my phone has gone off the hook today um what are you on Facebook or... no it's on YouTube oh. we're on YouTube yes loads of notifications I'm sorry if it does blip out let me know if it's good connection because I have no idea what I've gone on um Hi, newbie here from North Dakota. Is that right? North D Dakota, yeah. Nice to see you. That's nice. Um, yeah, so I've been rushing around trying to get the prep work done for this. I've also got a live talks, talks to Ada from With Love Furniture in an hour's time over on Furniture Painters Unite. Um, I will... I'll remember to do that before the end and kind of give you a heads up on that in a little while. Connection's good. Well, that's one good thing. Um, so, oh, the notifications are really annoying me. Are you watching? Yeah, Mr. M's watching. So he's gonna do um, some of the questions if you want to do that because I'm gonna bring the camera in really close so you won't see anything other than my uh, bloated belly probably. Um, lots of good eating in California. So there's a few of you coming on, that's exciting. 29 people and some thumbs up, that's really kind. So, um, what have I got to show you? So it's already started to be um, a little bit of a disaster anyway, because two things that happened. Whenever I go traveling, when I go teaching, I always tend to leave something behind. I leave little pockets of me behind. One of which was when I was in California, I left my atomizer, uh, the last one that was working, so I don't have that and I needed it, but we'll make do with whatever I've got. Oh, Brazil, Mr. M, we've got Brazil here. Oh, come, to the, um, oh come here. Mr. M's not very as technical as minded as me, I don't think. Maybe I'm not. Um, oh, let's go. You need to go back out and back in. So come completely out and back in and you'll get the comments up. Canada, lovely. So, yes, as I was saying, I always leave little pieces of me behind. I left my mix mat and my atomizer in um, Sacramento. So whoever got them, enjoy them. And the Barnwood stamp, which I intended to do here, half of it I think I left in Germany last summer. So I've only got one half of my Barnwood stamp. stamp. So if anybody wants to hit me up with a barn would stamp that would be really nice so let me show you the design that I've got because there's two halves to the barn would stamp this is just the the plexi plastic that it sits on I think many of you will know what a, a, the stamps are they're like a rubber silicon stamp that you can stamp paint and these are the designs this is the design that I've got which unfortunately there is another half to this pack and the other half has got more grainy texture, which is so nice. And I probably just only used the other side and that's why it got left and this one got packed and brought back home. But nevertheless, we're gonna still use this and see what we, um, Somerset, ooh, it's exciting. So we're gonna use this, these into textured paint. Hi from California again, lol. Hi there. So, oh, this is really nice. I really love reading the comments, but I am, just for the purpose of um, this session, I am definitely going to, um, I am definitely going to bring the camera right down because I think it's one of those things. I've only got little sample boards, so we're not doing too much. So, 
what would you do this on? And I, on the original projects that I did this uh, technique on, I had a beautiful, beautiful piece of furniture, but somebody had put some melamine wood on the top. I think the wood had gone at some point. So if you've got an Ikea project that is melamine, it would be great. And you want to make it look grainy and wood like that would be great um one thing i would say about that is when prepping for that give it two coats of chalk paint as a canvas coat before doing anything so i'm going to jiggle the camera around and bring you a little closer to um the table it's going to get really messy my notifications are going crazy today i don't know what's happened i've done something really good i think right so, mm. right, we're gonna go like that. Do we need more light, guys? Do you reckon we need more light? I'm not sure. Okie dokie, right, here we go. So, I've done a prep coat on my sample board. Don't know what that is. Um, just one coat on my sample board. This is MDF, it's quite porous, so it should be good to go. Like I said, if it is um, melamine or something like that, give it two good coats, leave it to dry overnight, and then it's good to go. Uh, it's okay. Oh, that's good. If it gets too dark, I'll pop the light on. Right, so there we go. That's the sample board. To create the texture in the sample board, we're gonna use the barnwood stamps in a random fashion. So, I've got my bowl from earlier on. So, the colour that I've got here is Annie's new shade, which is Whistler Grey. I used Whistler Grey on my sample board in Sacramento and it went so lovely. I'm going to do the same again. But if you're creating wood, um, my suggestions would be all woody colours. So, I've got a few colours here. Obviously, on Fleur, which is a chocolatey brown. Country grey, um, French linen, original I've got here, any of the whites would be good. Um, and I like to pop in a little bit of a blue tone, like duck egg. So we're going for like a coastal um, barn wood effect. You could use any colour that you wish. It's sometimes really nice to work with a pale colour, like country grey, because raw wood is that sort of colour. It's kind of got a country grey vibe to it. So without further ado, I've got my bowl from earlier on because I've pre-prepped along the way. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of Whistler. So we're going to go in here and take the lid off. I've got this little palm brush. This is actually a paint pixie brush, which was kindly gifted to me and it's been used and I've not mentioned it. So thank you, paint pixie. It's been used. There you go. I like these for this sort of uh, working across in a grain te technique. So I'm just going to take two splodges of Whistler. Splodges. Any comments, Mr. M? Oh, just a few, but yeah, looking forward to this tutorial. Hi everyone. Hello from Greece. Hello from Germany. Ah, uh, we've got some lots of people coming. Yeah, definitely left my barnwood stamp in Germany. I know that I did. Okay, so this is Salt Wash. My good friends at Salt Wash. They're lovely people. Um, some of you will know that product. It's just a thickening powder. I I must stress, you do not need to have a texturizing medium to do this. You can do it with Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, had I not left my mix mat in Sacramento, I could have shown you, but what you would do is lay your paint um, on the mix mat, leave it to kind of thicken over a bit of time, uh, and it will go to a nice consistency. Also, you can apply thick paint to the board quite a substantial amount and just hit it with a bit of heat, which we're going to do both of those things. So in with, and I mean only a scoop, not much into that amount, just to add a bit of body to that paint. So that's done. Let's mix that in. So mix, incorporate that into the paint. 
and it should make a thicker consistency. And if you see, look, nothing's falling off the brush now. So a little bit thicker than average. I'm gonna see if I can just move you down a little bit more. I've been saying that I can see you guys. That's it, I'll move the board back. Can't wait to see how you stamp this. Right, it's good fun, isn't it? It's like a bakery program, this. So mixed the paint and the salt wash really well, and then I'm just gonna apply a healthy coat. And you have to work with, quick, quick, quick with your sections. If you were doing this on a large dresser, you might want to use masking tape and work your board section. So work on the stamps, say, work out the measurement of each board and then masking tape off and doing straight lines and do them in linear lines first because that will really help with adding the paint so it doesn't get too dry quick because it will dry quick, especially if you're in warmer climates. It's not fully mixed properly. Make sure you mix it really well, but for the purpose of the video, you can just really incorporate that in. Make sure full coverage. Have you seen this comment from Kathleen Cooper? No. What's Kathleen Cooper's comment? Go for it. Hi Jonathan, can't wait to, to see how you stamp this. I love your way of teaching. I learned so much from uh, you. You are a gem. Oh, thank you. I think I just teach in comic book form, you know, step by step. It's how I learn visually, so I think that makes sense. And as you can see, I'm going with where I want the grain to be. This light, I don't know whether this light is good in here. Maybe, oh, you can see, it's just the dark colour, isn't it? So, you need quite a body of paint on the surface. It needs to have sort of a, a little, like half a millimetre thickness. You can do it with straight paint and apply lots of it. And then I would go in with a quick blast of heat. Not too much. If you're working on a larger piece, then by the time you get to one end, it should be good to go anyway. Then we're gonna take our barnwood stamp with the texture side down, obviously straight into that paint. I'm gonna think about applying it in a random fashion. So I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna kind of overlap a little bit because it's a small board. That one's in. As simple as this really, in. We might take this one, which is like rough cut sawn wood, which is really nice. Move that out of the way. And we might add that one there. And then there's another one, thin one. But like I said, there's two packs to this one, um, to this design of barn wood. There's two, of, two sheets with different grains on. So look up your local retailer for IOD products. Go and find them. I know they have a retailer finder on their website. I'm going to pop that one in there. See if we can squish this one maybe in here. Um, look them up for a local retailer and you'll find some of their products. They are awesome. Right, so now I'm pressing into that textural paint. And this does take, do a sample board before you do anything. So you can get a feel for the amount of paint, the drying time. Um, sometimes it doesn't come out as well as you'd expect. But generally, even if it's just a slight textural amount, it will not, um, it will not to worry because um, it will leave, when we do the colour washes over the top, 
it will leave something behind. So just a little bit of texture is good. So firmly pressing, I'm gonna move these stamps along. Right, let's see what we've got on this one. Yeah, that's left something behind. We'll go with this one. That lovely sound, yummy. I will lift it up in a moment so you can see in the light. Yeah. I'm just going to, yeah, pull that one up. Right, I'm gonna just pop that up. I don't know if you can see, right, in the light. Can you see? Not so good light. Can you see all of those textures? There we go, that's good light, isn't it? So you can see what it's left behind. I'm gonna quickly move on to adding a little bit more. You can flip these the opposite way round, which adds another pattern. When you're limited on your pattern because you've left your stamp in Germany, then you have to think on your feet. So a bit of pressure into that thick paint. Yeah, that's good. Which one should we go for now? I've got another one somewhere. Oh, this one. I've used that one, that's quite nice. We'll go that way around. Love, I love textures. These, this is just such a great way of creating something that looks completely different. If, this is really flat MDF wood. So if you've got melamine, this is a great thing to do. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's show you again in the line. Can you see? So it's got all of those textures. That's like, this, this one is like sawn wood. So very similar to the pattern. So that is all you need to do to create your texture on the board. So can you see in the light? So we now set this aside. It needs a good old drying time. Make sure, because there's a lot of product there, make sure you leave this to dry in the sunshine for about an hour. If not, um, probably, I don't know, a couple of hours if you're in damper climates in the UK, a couple of hours and it will be good to go. Right, I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna throw my stamps in the sink because, oh, actually, I might keep them because I might need them a little later on. So we'll pop them over there, out of the way. Right. So I've prepared a couple of boards earlier on today. Can you see? It's not so shiny now, so you can't see as much texture, but there is more texture on these ones because that one was wet, you could see it. Can, oh, that's better. This is like wood, rustic. Yeah, like rustic wood. That is exactly what we're going for. Here's the other one. I've got two, so we can have two plays like this. I'm just gonna pop the light on just to see if it makes any difference. Yeah, that's right. Well, that might make a little bit of a difference. Does that make a difference or does it make it harder to see? I think it makes it harder to see. What do you guys think, on or off lights? I think it'll be better once we start playing with this. Right, so that's what we've got. That's your textural surface, all created. It could be a buffet top or a sideboard, whatever you're working, a chest of drawers, an Ikea um, chest of drawers or something like that. I thought would say it's harder to look. Harder to see, right, let's get rid of that light. Is that better? Yeah, it is better. It's just, it's getting kind of dusky here, that's all. It's in between light in the UK at the minute. So there you go, yeah, if I do that, you can see. Work quicker, Jonathan, basically. So, there is many ways after you've created this that you could add some nuances of colour. One of which is my favourite thing of spraying the whole surface and applying a colour wash and allowing it just to seep through the grainy tones, um, which is really lovely, and leave it to drip dry on its side. 
and it'll pick up in all the tones. You could use white wax, you could use dark wax, depending on which colour that you've used. But instead, what I'm going to do today is Annie Sloan's wet wax technique. And we did this in Sacramento and it absolutely blew people's minds. And so many people were so surprised about how you can, because a lot of the other brands would say wax is last. With Annie's wax, it's not last, it's used at any point in the game, I think. So I, we're gonna use it today. I think some of you see me do this anyway, but we're gonna use it today to create our very own um, washed effect over the surface. So I've got a very large tin of Annie Sloan wax and a wax brush. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna wax one first and we might have a second go at another one. Look at that, it's all over my hands. So I'm loading up the wax brush quite heavily. You need quite a lot of wax, put that there, on the surface. Remember, there's lots of grain and texture in there. So you need to get it into all of those pockets. And you do need to not allow this to dry. It needs to stay wet. That's why it's called wet wax. So whilst your wax is on and wet over the whole surface area, again, work in your strips of wood if you need to. So that's that. Is it clear wax? Yep, yeah, it's clear wax at this stage. I've not done it with any of the tinted waxes at this stage. I would say definitely clear wax. Okay, so things are gonna slightly get a little bit different here now for me because, where's my little spoons that you gave me, Dennis? Behind you. Behind me. So I'm gonna pick a few colors. I'm gonna place them into this bowl. One of which is, we might have a bit of enfleur. A spoon of enfleur. I'm not gonna to need too much. We'll have a little bit of country gray because that's a woody color. Gonna leave them up there. What else can we have? Oh, we'll definitely have a little bit of duck egg blue because I think a bit of duck egg blue in there is lovely. Now you could mix these into color washes in separate bowls. But if you're like me, they're going straight into this tray. Ordinarily, if I've got my atomizer, I just go straight on the surface. I, I'm gonna spritz it down and I would go straight on the surface. Um, a little bit, we'll have a little bit of, what have we got? We've got a white, maybe a white, because this is a dark color. So this is original. Right, that will do. There's French linen as well, which would be quite nice. So there's my three colors and what I'm gonna do now is, I, because I haven't got my atomizer, I'm just gonna spray the surface of this wet wax with a kitchen spray bottle. So it's got a little bit of moisture sat on the surface, but I'm also gonna add some moisture to the paint as well, just to loosen it. And I've got a few paint brushes here. We'll maybe go with a big one. We'll go country gray in the big one. And it's as simple as just adding some slashes of paint to the board. Um, I'm gonna go quite heavy on the country gray. Can you see how the paint's kind of beading up? It's not allowing it to stay anywhere. Also, I've got the small brushes here. We'll pop a little bit of on flare in there. And I'm not really thinking, you could work to each segment of the boards. I'm just gonna do it as a solid board. And we'll go in for some duck egg. I think that's really nice. So no rhyme or reason. Those colours I just think look really lovely together. Bit of white, a bit too much there, but never mind. A bit more white in there. So quite wet paint, not raw paint from the can. There needs to be a bit of uh, movement in the water, in the paint, wash, whatever you want to call that. 
So I'm going to show you that again. We'll do this again in a minute because it's quite good fun. Can you see it's kind of a little bit washy and wet and splitting? Wax resist is nice. Yes, it is. It's really cool. So I'm going to turn it this way so I can go against the grain. So whilst that's on, I've got, you can take shop towel, but I've got some cotton cloth and I'm just going to slowly, I'm going to smooth this ball of cloth out. I'm going to slowly go with the grain and just remove some of that paint gently with the grain. Yeah, they, they, what a beautiful tutorial. Oh. And she loves it. Thank you. Yeah, the problem is they like that love. So now we're going to start working the wax, the paint, everything in to one another. You can add more paint if you feel like you want to add some more paint. Just move your cloth round. So it should sit in all of those lovely grains. I think I'm gonna go in with a bit more duck egg and white. So you can play with this. I think the lighter colors on this dark color are much nicer. We'll have a little bit more on flare in there. They're just really lovely colors together, I think. Do. Spin it the other way around, it's easier. So if you're going to do lighter colour, like country grey base, then I would say, yeah, that's quite nice. Can we see? It's hard to see. It looks dark that way, but when you hit it with a light, it's not as dark as it seems. So just working it in. I think I'm going to add a touch more light in there. I really, really like the light over the dark. See, can you see I've just pulled a bit of paint off there? It probably wasn't quite as dry as it needed to be. Nevertheless, that's quite cute, isn't it? Or you could go back in and hide it and feather it out. Happy accidents can be fixed. So we're gonna leave that one there. We'll go on to the other one. Can we see? Beautiful, textural, woody, lovely effects. Right, let's do the other one. I think, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do none of the brown, but go with all of the light shades because obviously that was quite dark base. So in with the wax again. Might as well do them both. See how the other one turns out if we do just lighter tones. How cool would this be done? Side of an out, chest off. How would it be done on the yeah. side of a chest of drawers? I would yeah. tip the side of the drawers. Chest up. up a door. Or door. A, a door. Yes. I would definitely tip it up and work flat. It's just easier. So that's a little bit of water on there. We're going to go in with more white tones, I think. I'm trying to see where my pattern is, because that would be quite nice. Duck egg.
country grey. some more white there it's kind of got that beach vibe I'm gonna hold that up can you see how it's resisting as well so I'm gonna go slightly lighter I will do another pass we're gonna go slightly lighter So really, you're just going to have to have a lot of fun doing this. What was quite interesting, when we did this, we had a room full of half Annie Sloan stockists, half other brands. There was uh, Debbie DIY paint there as well. And the amount of people that says, oh, wow, that's so amazing. I didn't know you could do that. And then... Then Annie mentioned that um, that were that they were looking for new stockists, which she mentioned. I think I mentioned it on the live the other day. She mentioned how you can carry other products. If you're a stockist of any other products, Annie will definitely consider being bringing in another range of paints if you fancy. Um, and if you do, if that's something you want to do, just hit me up, message me, and I'll point you in the right direction. Can I put a question? Go for it. Terry, do you still with clear wax when completely? Yes. You, you don't have to, because there's a lot of wax in there and it should penetrate the other way, so it'll wax down and wax up. Um, and the beautiful thing is, if you're using um, salt wash, the colour should be incorporated all the way through that first layer of paint, which then will, if you chip anything, because it's quite textural, if you chip anything, it'll only be that colour. You can also, there's lots of things that you can do from here on in. Let me show you. Can we see in the light? There's lots of things you can do from here on in. You could you could at this point sand it a little bit to bring back some of the darker texture through. So that's one thing that you could do. You could go with tinted waxes. So we could put dark wax or white wax over this and that'll add another layer of depth and crumminess and textural stuff. And also, if you want to add, which we probably will do, some more grain texture, and I'm on about, not so much this side of the IOD, but there is a lovely grain, grain pattern on the other side that I haven't got. You could print it again over the top and then leave all of that to dry, maybe the next day, come in and clear wax the whole thing again, and it's good to go. So, let me take a look at that, that's pretty good. I think what we might do is one, that's nearly dry. So they're very slightly different. One's a bit darker than the other. One's got more textural stuff on there. So on this one, we may take, let's take the Barman stamp again. And we will, although this has been used, I think what I'll do is just pop some paint over the top in country grey. There's a bit of country grey. Whoopsie. Oh, that's old white. That's country grey. <laughs> it is dark in here, guys, now. So a little bit of country grey, just over the stamp, just a dry brushing over this stamp. And you could go back over it to add another layer and print that on. Let's see where I did that, sort of here. So I'm going to pop it over the top. Just give it another shimmy. And 
There we go. Can you see the difference that that's made? It's made another layer. Let's do that again. Yeah, see what the light's like now because it's got really dark quick. Ooh, it's still a bit yellow, the light. There we go. So it's adding another layer. Let's drop to a different pattern. Yeah, that's good. So we're gonna drop this in here. So the odd tickle of the, the print again over the top can be really quite something. Um, let's go, I'll use this one again without second pass. Lovely. And we'll go with this one just along the edge. And then the other one we're going to hit with some wax, some tinted wax. really difficult to see but there's lots of things going on on there we'll save that we'll just quickly blast the two of them with some heat so that we can add some wax to them um, there's a little bit of heat So I have got this really bad anomaly here, which I think, I think underneath there was some gilding wax on the board before I started. Um, isn't that barn wood stamp? Yes, it is. It is. But nevertheless, I'm going to ignore that. Um, what I can do is <laughs> cheat it in. There's definitely some wax or something. I think it had copper gilding wax underneath. So make sure your surface is clean before you go. Right, so what colour waxes have we got? We've got, I maybe do some brown on this one. It's not thoroughly dry. And we'll go white on that one, I think. So let's grab some white wax. Or oh, let's just do a mix of the two. Why not? Let's just have some fun. Um, I don't have a brush, so I'm gonna use a paintbrush. Naughty Jonathan. So, in there. Any questions, Dennis? Yeah, like, uh, uh, would you be able to do this technique with a wood graining saw? Do you think I no longer have this stamp, but definitely need to learn to achieve this? I, I think you might be able to do it with a wood graining tool. I think long as there's enough sort of texture there, but you could create texture without the barn wood stamp. You could just do it with a stippled effect, um, another really lovely way of creating this grainy texture is ply your chalk paint nice and thick, heat it up with a hairdryer, and just as it's starting to dry on the top, take your brush like that on the side, and as it's drying, drag your brush, and what you'll find is it'll create sort of textural, lumpy, bumpy bits. So that's another good way of um, creating some sort of texture in there. So this is just dark wax now. I'm adding a bit of brown in there. All mixing together, paint, wax, wax and paint. It's all good. 
same thing, I'm kind of adding nuances. What I would say is when you've printed your boards, go with each board individual, and it really will look that little bit more like woody. a little bit stripy so let's just add a bit more dark here just to take the edge of that stripiness and the more you polish it the interesting it gets I really think it's a beautiful technique so I'm also going to knock it back with a little bit of sandpaper now just for a little bit of fun. That's that. So that is, can we see? I'm gonna go right up to the camera. There we go, grainy sort of grainy texture. You don't have to do this colour. I just really like that grayness to the overall look. Go with country grey on fleur, whatever you wish. So let's do this one. We'll go in, is it dry enough? What the heck, let's just go for it. Uh, where's my wax brush? The white wax brush, was this the white one? No, this was the white wax brush. We might go heavy on the white, I think. A bit more coastal vibe. So don't forget to check out for your retailers of these products. IOD, this is. Um, and then you can also, any Sloan products, you'll find them. There is a stockist finder on Annie Sloan's, www.annysloan.com. So that one's got a little bit of a lighter vibe to it, which is really nice. Two different colorways, same colors different layers. Can we see? Yeah, Lynn says she looks uh, with the white wax. It does look great with the white wax. Should you do this with French linen and white wax, it'll look gorgeous as well. French linen for a coastal look. Um, let's put the two together and you can see the two of them, how there is a color difference look. That one is a little bit more dark and mysterious. Yep, side by side. Same colours, just different amounts of different colour. And be assured, I haven't got the best stamps because I lost mine in Germany. So should you do this with the more grainy texture, you will be blown away by the results. It is absolutely fantastic. But I think that's quite good. It almost looks like um, decaying plaster. And, you know, that look. You could also use, IOD have a brilliant crackle um, stamp. Also, they have a beautiful, I've forgotten what it's called. I always forget this one. It's their tile stamp. Cabano, the Cabano tile stamp. If you want to create a textural tile finish, it looks awesome. So they are, Good to go. Let me bring the camera up so I can speak to you a little bit more. We have a, a cat. Oh, there's the elusive one. Don't eat the paint. 
So that's the cat you never see, guys. Oh, this light's not good on me, is it, Mr. Shiny? Straight into it, see? Why do cats love paint? Are you you're making your debut, sunshine? Don't stand in the paint. Don't eat anything. So, here we go. I'll, I'll give you another quick hold up. See if I can get a, the best. Now I'm closed. It's really difficult to show. I wish it was daylight. If I go that way, maybe that way. Should I put the light? Turn the light off. Let's see. Because I'm all shiny as well. Oh, that is really dark now. No, it's not the best. Oh, wow. Ooh, turn it right down. Yeah, that's better. There you go, that's better. So, grainy. Look at that. It's like a fossil. Choose your colours wisely. Let's go with this one, the lighter one, which everybody seemed to like, that more coastal, coastal vibe. Uh, there we go. So you can see all of that sort of textural, farm woody, that's a good angle. So try it on fleurs, country grey, old white, duck eggs lovely in there. Any sort of wood tone would be really, really good. Perfecto, somebody just put perfecto, perfecto. Yeah, Thank you. Um, right, that is just about it, but please don't go away. So what I want to say is, um, if you want to be a retailer of IOD, go and give the girls, if you're a stockist of anything, go and give the girls a shout. If you want to be a stockist of Annie Sloan, give me a shout and I will pass you to the right person. Um, Annie will take people that have got other brands of paint in their stores if um, they want to. And some people missed out. We had a queue of people signing up to be um, stockist after this tutorial. And I think it was because of the sheer creativity of it and people are missing that sort of fun side of paint. Um, some people missed out on being stockists because they had one in a local, a local area and they've now left. So there was lots of people that wanted to be stockists. And, you know, if you become an Annie Sloan stockist, you more than likely meet me on my journeys, which I'd really love. Enough of that anyway. This is about creativity. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Also, what time are we now? We are, ooh, I'm cracking on out there. So in just 10 minutes time, I'm going to be, I'm gonna try and freshen myself up. I'm going over to Instagram to see Ada Franco, who is with Love Furniture. I'm going to be interviewing her on Furniture Painters Unite UK. It's the Instagram page, Furniture Painters Unite. If you've not liked that page, there is a US one, there is a South Africa one, there is um, a Europe one, and there's one more, maybe Australia. Um, if you want to join me, that would be really lovely if you can make yourself a quick cup of tea and come and join me and Ada for a quick chat, half an hour chat, all things paint, see what she's up to. That is on Furniture Painters Unite UK Instagram Live. That is if I can operate the live situation. Um, I've had lots of technical issues today, all day long, so it should be all good fun. So that's me done, guys. Thank you, all 70 of you there. Was there any questions before I quickly go off and make my hands, clean my hands and move on? Uh, let's just have a quick look. I just saw one come up then. I missed it. Oh, I hate this thing. My hands are all painty. So I can, oh, there we go. Um, a thin crack in the wood would... Oh, uh, I missed it. A thin crack in the wood would also be nice. Yes, it would. Even if you're heating it with the hairdryer, you can get sort of cracks in the paint. So don't worry. And even if it's the smallest amount of texture that you've created with that stamp, it really will show with the wet wax, the paint, the wax. Just layer it all up. No rhyme or reason. Have fun with it. Don't put yourself into too many boundaries with it. If you choose a nice set of colours and just go for it, I'm 100% sure that you will get wonderful results. 
So let me know how you get on. Give it a go. Check out IOD for their um, Barnwood stamps. Um, check out Annie's products. Um, I didn't use anything else today. I like to always cover off what I'm using. Anyway, Annie Sloan's products, Annie Sloan, www.annysloan.com. You'll find a, a retailer finder and you will do on IOD as well. They're all over the place. And if you want to become one, hit me up with them and I'll pass you into the right direction or go directly. They'll look after you. I've only seen Helena do uh, the oh, interview. Yes, it's me tonight. It's me. Very special. I'm not very good at doing interviews, but it's going to be more of a talk. I'll talk and she'll talk. Anyway, I'm going because I've got about five minutes to get myself ready. Much love. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you on Instagram in a little while. Take care, everybody.